Hello everybody, I'm Andy with Liminal Entertainment Technologies, and in this video we're going to show you how to use Zoom ISO with the ATEM. We're going to show you how to get individual hardware outputs from your Mac that you can then bring in and mix in an ATEM Mini Extreme. So we'll show you how to set up eight outputs that you can then bring in there. We're going to use programs like Black Siphon to be able to put the videos on a deck link, but we'll also talk a little bit about how you can send it directly through HDMI. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now that we're inside the Mac, uh, we have uh, joined a meeting with Zoom ISO, and we show you how to do that in our Getting Started video, as well as give you an overview of the interface, so we'd encourage you to check that out. I'm only going to be using Siphon today, so I'm going to uncheck the NDI box here, just to save on us some performance. And I'm going to go over to the Number of Outputs area, and I'm going to set that to 8. We're going to use an A10 Mini Extreme today, so it has 8 inputs, so we're going to set 8 outputs. And I'm going to go ahead and set those to 720p and default to screen 0. So the next thing I'm going to do is begin to select users. Now I could do this through the drop down list here, but I'll go ahead and do this today doing the participant matrix. So I'm just gonna go through and tick the boxes for people who have video on. Okay, now I've selected uh, eight folks with video on. So if I look at my show all windows here, we'll see eight active video feeds in addition to our uh, normal zoom displays. So now we have them routed to Siphon outputs. And we're gonna use a program today called Black Siphon. And what's cool about Black Siphon is it takes a frame that's posted to the Siphon server and allows it to be sent directly to a Decklink hardware output or to an Ultra Studio if you have that product line instead. And this is gonna be super low latency, super low overhead because Siphon is just posting the video frame on the GPU so that Black Siphon can grab it and suck it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the Black Siphon program. And you'll see here, it's detected that I have a Decklink Quad 2 enabled on my system. So just real quick, I'm gonna show you in Blackmagic desktop video setup how it is um, it is the case that we have a Decklink Quad connected and the Mac can see it. Now if you have an M1, it might not be seen right now in desktop video, you have to install that. In order to install it, you have to enable a security text. We'll set a, uh, a video in the description so you can take a look at how to do that if you're on an M1. So make sure you've installed Blackmagic desktop video and then you can install Black Siphon and you can begin to work with these outputs. You'll see them show up here. So you can watch my multi-view as I assemble this. Again, note the numbering scheme. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could match your inputs by setting the right stream number. I'm just gonna go ahead and go right through, marching through the uh, the numbering of odd and even without really considering uh, for which is which. But again, it does odd numbers first and then it will do the even numbered ones. So I'm just gonna go through and map them one to one though on my situation here. So do that again, be four and four, five and five, six and six, seven and seven, and eight and eight. All right, there we go. So now if we look over at our, uh, our multi-view, you'll see we have eight inputs coming in and I can begin to uh, change what goes out to the preview bus and then I could uh, choose to run a cut transition or a fade transition. I can begin really to use the ATEM now with individual zoom inputs coming through. So um, again, we have the option if we wanted to, we could embed uh, available audio devices that are available on the system. I haven't set those up, but if you wanted to send audio down your SDI line, you could totally do that. So if you're using, again, if you're using Black Siphon, you go down to this bottom area and then you select your routing and your output video mode. And in my case, I just have some HDMI adapters that are turning the SDI outputs from the Decklink Quad 2 into HDMI inputs into the A10 Mini Extreme. So again, as I cut through, I can, you can see I'm able to switch between the different sources that are available there and I can cut or fade between them. So that opens up a lot of options in terms of mixing in terms of the, the hardware outputs. But if you're using an ATEM and you're using an ATEM Mini, maybe not the Extreme or something like that, and you just have a couple of HDMI ports that you wanna populate, one thing that you, could, you can consider doing is using the full screen output mode of Zoom ISO to get to an HDMI output. For example, I'm taking one of my video feeds here and I've just selected to go full screen. So that's gonna be 1080 on this 1080 panel here. Um, and that's going out to screen one, which is my secondary display. So in this case, we can route a full screen user and then we can choose anybody we want who has video on. So I'll go over here and I'll grab maybe John. He's not at his chair right now, but I can grab um, anybody who has an HD source, Ray. Ray looks good over here on this monitor. So um, anybody that we wanna route, we can go to a fully clean HDMI out. Now, if you're seeing a top carousel up here in the top area, that's because you need to go to mission control and disable something called displays have separate spaces. So if you go to mission control in the system preferences, you see this box, displays have separate spaces. And if that is checked, the top menu bar is gonna appear here on your monitor. And you're not gonna want that when you're going out into the ATEM. So you disable that, log out, log back in, and then you can have this nice clean image that's fully 
um, fully occupying the screen. And then again, if this is not a screen, but an input to the ATEM, you'll have a clean input that way. So if you have something like a Mac mini and you want to take some display link adapters and get yourself four HDMI outputs from some of those Thunderbolt ports, that would be another way of populating it without having to go out to SDI architecture. Just be careful about the quality of the adapter if you choose to go that route. So that's an overview of using the ATEM with Zoom ISO to be able to get video feeds of Zoom participants out into a hardware ecosystem. If you have any questions, send us an email at info at liminalet.com. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. We also encourage you to check out the other videos in this series. Uh, maybe a good one to look at is how to use Siphon with Zoom ISO because we use Siphon in the output chain when we go to SDI. Um, but for now, that's all, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.